welcome back to Project Seawolf. Back at the boat, I've got the new Bob Stay Terminal from Spartan Marine. This is cast bronze from the East Coast from a marine metal shop there. They make specialty bronze fittings and pretty affordable too. So this is where this is gonna live, up here, around about. So I'm gonna need to build out that fiberglass a little bit because it's got kind of a, a wobble, just not enough space there. And then I also have to build the inside of the, uh, the terminal out a little bit with the fiberglass to be flat so that the backing plate can go inside. Stainless bolts, stainless backing plate, bronze fitting, which is fine because stainless and bronze get along well. It's just stainless and aluminum don't get along well, which is interesting because bronze is so close to aluminum. But yeah, so inside it's gonna be like that, I suppose. Um, so I'm just gonna need to build it out a little bit there. Um, I'm glad I don't have to bulge out the, bu the bow to fit the, um, the new bobstay terminal. Let's see what we did here. So we have uh, the through hole that I filled that's in the engine compartment. Um, you can see some resin probably dripped out, yeah. yeah which is fine because uh, we're gonna be grinding this back as well, no problem. Oh, nice. It, it, it stayed in a lot better than the uh, the previous one. The previous one kind of bulged out with the fiberglass, but this one, this one appears to have stayed that way better. Um, I'm definitely gonna have to grind this way back. Yeah, no remaining edge of this hole because uh, the hole had some um, sealant on it and uh, I just need to grind that out and um, make sure it's just all fiberglass on fiberglass. All right, on the boat, um, I just met up with somebody with a Corbin 39 that was really nice and, and a Bristol channel cutter. Man, some nice boats. Uh, got full tours of those. Uh, really encouraging me to get back then to uh, fixing up this boat and cruising again. <laughs> man, I miss the water. Uh, so today, I think um, working on the bobstay terminal hole would be a good plan. Be nice to get at least one. Eh, I don't know if I have to do much out. Ah, I do have to do some outside work to fit that um, new bobstay terminal. But at least I can dig that out and uh, free fiberglass it again. So I think that'll be a good plan. Um, I'm just gonna have to move this stuff. Just like get up in there. Wow, seeing this space in the V-Birth again makes me uh, really inspired to uh, work on this whole space uh, while I have things moved. Yeah, so the, the goal for today though is to uh, fix that, at least seal it back up again. So sand it, uh, grind it out, and uh, add some fiberglass. Make it solid again so that I can drill holes in it again. Also make it flat for the uh, for the new backing plate. As far as the chain plate or the uh, anchor locker goes, um, I think, so before it had a flat surface down here, which is like totally broken out. And um, I'm thinking of, because I want the chain to be lower down, building a bulkhead here, which is just an extension of this X. So the X would go down here and uh, there would be a wall there and uh, a drain in the center middle. And I, I kind of want to make this forward section watertight in case I get a crack in the bow or something. It'd be super nice if this whole area was watertight, so probably put uh, the wall back in here in this this port and get a hatch for this and some sort of way to dog this down on a seam or something. Yeah, I mean, there's gonna be a lot of storage under here, but uh, I also want these to be watertight. So there's gonna be another bulkhead that I'm gonna make under here that's gonna go across there and then on top of that, there's gonna be bulkheads here and here that are gonna seal up uh, one, two, three, four compartments for the V-berth, not including the chain plate locker. Um, yeah, that would be awesome. So I, I gotta figure out what kind of hatches there are that I can put in this space or, um, yeah, cause I still wanna be able to use this as storage here, but I want it to be watertight. So um, I'll figure that out put it in the wall here, dog this down, have that go down, and so there's more space for chain underneath. Cool, okay, it's all coming together, and then I'm gonna put in fiberglass along these seams, 
It's a lot of scratches from when I took out the, uh, the liner that I'm gonna be filling with fiberglass. Anyway, so yeah, I'm gonna glass this to the hall, which it's never been glassed to the hall before, which is interesting because all this liner was just kind of loosely against the hall. So when the engine was going, it was just rattling against the hall. Uh, so yeah, tab that in, make it all watertight and make sure it can be used for storage too. Okay, let's see. Um, I've cleaned it up pretty good and I've remarked where I want to uh, flatten out the fiberglass. So basically I'm going to be building up the fiberglass uh, here in this, uh, in this rectangle until it's flat. Um, it's going to be a lot of glass, but uh, yeah, so that's how I'm going to put on this uh, chain plate. Um, this is the back backing plate to the new Bob stay chain plate. So just gonna, it's nice and cleaned up and sanded. So, um, pretty much ready to go. Everything is ready to go. Again, we're going with the uh, total boat to one system with the pumps to measure. So easy peasy, probably gonna do 10 pumps in the cup. Uh, here's all the fiberglass I cut, uh, alternating um, chop strand and biaxial roving. And that will build up a nice, hopefully almost flat uh, surface for this. If not, then um, I can always come back and add some more layers. Um, yeah, so that's that's ready, and uh, okay, it's time to mix some epoxy.
All right, just like before, we're gonna wet the surface first. When it's whipped up from the drill, it's like, um, or maybe it's just this epoxy, but it's just borderline thickened epoxy because it's so, yeah, just so thick. Put some fiberglass on before it starts running all the way down into the bilge. Not that it would get that far, but you know, you know what I'm saying. I'm also gonna get some of this area around the, some of the area that I've um, sanded that I might not actually cover in fiberglass just to seal the fiberglass back up and in, in case I actually do use it with the larger patches. I would really like you to sit over the hole cleanly. Thank you. Very good. Again, just like all the others, we're gonna be grinding it out from the other side as well. So this piece here might not even, not much of it might exist in the end. But it is the adhesion layer here upon which the other uh, teardrop shape, let's say, by axle roving will sit. Another fear I have with this space, because I'm trying to make a flat surface, is if the fiberglass gets bun bundled or bun like bunched up, bundled. I want to thank my sponsors and everybody who's made it possible for me to continue doing this. Um, totally saves my butt every month that that check from Patreon. So if you want to help me out and um, help me make these boat storage payments and pay for equipment and all that to keep this project going, then you can check out the Patreon. And that actually genuinely helps me out a ton. I'm not as big as other channels, you might not notice, but uh, so Patreon takes me a lot farther. Thank you to everybody who has helped me make this happen. Sincere sincerely, this is, this is the dream. That's gonna, it's gonna be a lot. <laughs> I have a very narrow, like almost knife-like roller that will be very handy in this situation. Fiberglass to lay nice to get the bubbles out and make sure everything lies flat. Cause I don't want any leaks up here. The babies, the babies are doing great. They roll over like crazy. They're on the verge of crawling. Also, I'm gonna be in Oregon, showing off some of the killer whale research I do uh, at the Oregon Coast Aquarium. So, I uh, hope that goes well. Yeah. It can be a really good, uh, really good connection there. Would love to be more involved in research on killer whales in Oregon. Kind of a dead spot for research. For some reason, Oregon doesn't have uh, as much going on when it comes to research. I need more epoxy. This is a big epoxy job. It's unfortunate that this channel isn't a sailing channel right now. I, I love sailing, I love cruising more than anything. It really is just an epoxy channel. <laughs> probably not the best example on how to do it, but um, that would probably be Adam Voyager. But you know, I get it done as well. It's kind of fun watching this boat come together. Well, it's definitely not gonna bust out of the fiberglass this time. Yeah, I definitely need some more thin strips of uh, the fiberglass. But, you know, maybe maybe I'll do that when I mix up the new pot of epoxy. I'll just also cut a bunch of strips. That will hopefully even things out. Because right now we're at four layers of um, 
chop strand and biaxle, which means this, uh, this hole is pretty much well sealed from this side. Really, we just want to even it out so that the chain plate can sit flat. Okay, off camera, I, I put on a bunch of uh, chop strand strips, which uh, have flattened it out quite a bit, just as a filler. And so I've pumped some more epoxy, so this is end up ending up being a 20 pump epoxy job, uh, to give you an idea. This roving seems like it has more substance to it. Maybe I should have done strips of roving as well because um, that seems to fill the space a lot faster. They used, uh, the previous owner used wood as the spacer, which is uh, great, but uh, the wood was rotted out and uh, just covering up the hole that the U-bolt uh, that <laughs> they put in made. So yeah, this is gonna be way more, way more robust for sure. Special shout out to Peter, your support is really helped out uh, in the past few months and uh, getting epoxy and keeping the project going. So thank you so much, Peter. So right now we are just building up this flat surface for the terminal backing plate, hopefully to be flat. All right, let's test, let's test the chain plate and see if it fits chain plate. Uh, it's looking okay. Do you see the, uh, you see the steam coming off of the, uh, of the epoxy. It's really cooking now. Um, hard to tell if it actually fit or not. It's like I add a few layers and then we'll do the final layer. You can tell the bottom layers have um, solidified. Um, so at least I know it's not going anywhere. Alright, last two strips and then uh, we're gonna call it call it good and uh, put on the roving. All right, this piece is pretty close to the same size as the actual chain plate backing plate. So if this lays pretty flat, then that's a good sign. The epoxy is very hot now. <laughs> the steam wasn't a sign enough. Other than this, um, we can use some thickened epoxy to ferret out to be exactly flat or even ferrying compound, I guess. So not to worry if this isn't exactly flat. I uh, got as close as I could because, you know, you don't want it to be all thickened epoxy because something that hard is brittle. You want the flexibility of fiberglass. Holy moly, that's hot. Uh, now I need to soak this in epoxy. Oh, perfect. I think I have just enough left for this final job. So, If a storm tears apart this boat, the, uh, <laughs> the one thing left is going to be this, uh, this piece of fiberglass in the V-berth. You kind of want because uh, that's, that's a good sign because uh, it's going to be holding up the mast in storms, helping to at least, and uh, taking some of the load from the head sail as well. So you do want this to be just rock solid. Okay, uh, pretty productive day. I opened up this hole. Um, it used to cut off here, but I just opened up the rest of the way. It's gonna be nice to uh, be able to work in there. Also, I took out the lining under here so that I can access all parts of the hull now on the head. And there's tons of stuff underneath that, like uh, rust and screws and stuff. All right, and this is uh, really cooking. I mean, it, it's 
it's too hot to touch now. Um, so it's a, uh, it, it looks very flat. Um, I don't know if you can really tell on the, on the camera, but, uh, it's pretty flat and, um, whatever is not flat about it, um, will be filled in by the thickened epoxy, uh, when I get to that stage of putting the, uh, Bob stay terminal back on. Um, so I want to thank you for watching. Um, if you want to support the channel, check out the Patreon. I'll send you a shirt with this, this design on it. And uh, we should be doing the t-shirt drawing on this episode. Um, actually, <laughs> on this episode, we're doing the t-shirt drawing. So um, it's a little too soon now uh, to do it in real time. So I'm going to do it uh, in real time and uh, film that at home. So cut to that. We got the, uh, the choices. I'm trying to take my if if the baby if the babies stop the spinner, it's an act of God. So, um, yeah. Oh, jeez. All right, Cal Calvin, C Calvin. <laughs> <laughs> they mess up uh, flying chops chances. Uh, Calvin. All right, all right. So now we're gonna start the spin. All right. This is this is for this is for the free the free T-shirt. He's gone. It's gone the other way. <laughs> we just filmed the uh, spinning for winning the shirt, and I feel like the first spin with the first attempt using the the bumblebee spinner should probably go to flying chop because if you pause the footage, you can see that the spinner landed on flying chop right before Calvin tried to put the spinner in his mouth. So um, I'm gonna also reach out to flying chop to give him a shirt. And then, uh, yeah, we're gonna continue with the uh, the next spin, which will go to the uh, definitive winner and the uh, runner up. But uh, flying chop, I believe wins on a technicality as well. Oh no, oh, no. <laughs> Lauren, you gonna help? I'm gonna help Dada. Okay. Calvin, are you ready to help? <laughs> All right. Um, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. All right. Let's see. Why did I think this is a good idea? Because babies are cute. All right. It's, it's, see, it's not fair if it's not flat. Well, then, do, would you like a book? Ooh, would yeah. You, would you like a book or a, a vinyl album of some variety? There we go. There we go. The Hobbit. Yeah. Don't you dare. <laughs> I love you, but I'll be really upset. <laughs> okay, you ready? Mm -hmm. All right. So. <sighs> what do you think, Cal? What do you think, Lauren? <laughs> oh, spinny. All right, all right, some interference. Some interference. Oh. <laughs> I think that landed on uh, Larry. I, I agree with that. The pointer Excessive. landed on Larry. <laughs> it sure did. So Larry, Herbert, Hebert, I'll, I'll reach out and hopefully get you a shirt. Now let's spin again. For the runner up. Oh, okay. Cal Calvin, focus. Calvin, please. Maybe, maybe Lauren wants a chance at tempting fate. Lauren, look at that. Oh, you. He's leaking milk out of his face. I can't help you right now. Sorry. Okay, Mr. Formy. Mr. Formy's the runner up. <laughs> Yay! Yay! All right. Thanks for watching the episode, uh, and thanks for bearing with me. Um, I'll reach out to you, Larry, for, for a shirt, and uh, this was really fun. So I think we're just going to keep doing these uh, in the future. So, uh, 
keep commenting and I'll keep adding you to the uh, to the list and uh, we'll do another spin and uh, maybe we can find a way to get the kids to uh, <laughs> spin in a less chaotic way um, count on it. <laughs> see you in the next episode all right bye <laughs>